Mr. Chairman, I, I have missed uh, what some have described as fireworks, or as I came in, uh, Senator Marshall referred to it as a skunk fight. We don't have skunks in Alaska, so I'm not really quite sure how skunks fight, but I'm sure it's, uh, it's not pretty. And um, it's been unfortunate that, uh, that at the committee we've been um, engaged in, in this back and forth. But the fact of the matter is, I, as I see it, is, is that the actions of the nominee um, some years ago uh, with, with regards to uh, her engagement um, with this act of, of tree spiking ecoterrorism um, is, is really, really disturbing. And if we're not all disturbed by that, um, I think we need to, to look just clear-eyed at it. I, I'm not going to, to rehash or, or relitigate uh, what, what colleagues have gone back and, and forth on uh, today. Instead, I'm going to, to speak to what perhaps some would say, well, that's more parochial to Alaska because I've got some significant concerns with the way that this nominee has handled responses to my questions, specifically as they relate to public land orders in, in Alaska. Um, but it goes to, I think, her broader view of, of um, understanding of multiple use, um, uh, the, the, the charge that we have for, for multiple use application on, on our public lands. Um, I think that she has, has demonstrated, at least through, through the conversations that I've had with her and what I've seen with, I believe, the actions that she has taken, that when it comes to the multiple use mandate of the Bureau of Land and, and Management and, and all that it administers, that she doesn't have the balanced approach that I am looking for in a nominee that, that would have this portfolio. It is really very, very clear. It's very clear. The Bureau is, is there to manage, but also to balance the use of both renewable and non-renewable resources on our public lands. And again, I think, I think um, Ms. Stone Manning has made clear through her actions, through her writings that we have seen, um, through her advocacy, that she, if she believes that this is a priority, she hasn't demonstrated that. It does not appear to me that she holds that value of, of a true balance when it comes to, to multiple use. And that, in my view, um, disqualifies her from this office. Uh, in Alaska, as, as you all know, you've heard me, you've heard me say over the years uh, on this committee, multiple use is absolutely key. If we're not able to use the, the some 63% of our, our federal lands um, uh, in, in a balanced and a rational way, uh, it would be extraordinarily difficult for Alaskans to have any kind of a livelihood up there. And so whether it is the opportunity for recreation, whether it is the opportunity for subsistence, um, the opportunity to, to develop, we rely on these lands, and so you've got to have a balanced approach to it. I mentioned the issue with, with PLOs, public land orders, in, in, in Alaska. Um, we call them D1 withdrawals. These, these were areas that were designated decades ago um, for review and study. Um, once the review and study, though, is complete and the recommendation comes from within the agency itself to, to open up for access to the public for multiple use permit purposes. The agency determines this after decades of use, determines that it's time to lift these, these withdrawals. BLM has admitted, they have admitted that there is no longer a valid reason, none at all, for these withdrawals. The Bureau has used every tool every tool at their disposal to ensure, though, that these D1 withdrawals are held in place. And what that does is it puts us in a state of limbo that we have been in for decades. It puts us in a state of purgatory that we're having to live with. And it denies that opportunity for any kind of access because it's a no man's land. And the Bureau recognizes it. And they have pledged that they're going to do something about it. And they have acted upon it, and then they withdrew it. They just unilaterally withdrew it. 
And there are many in Alaska that are waiting. The state of Alaska continues to wait for its allotment. But members will remember that uh, last year, two, excuse me, two years ago, um, we were able to finally, finally advance through this committee a way to resolve the, the long um, overdue commitment that had been made to Alaska Natives who had served in Vietnam, that they were finally going to receive their allotments. They weren't, uh, they weren't able to claim them at the time that, that these were open for selection because they were serving their country in Vietnam. These are Alaska Natives who serve per capita on a higher, higher basis than anybody else out there. They were denied their allotments. They come back after the war, and there's not been a process that was there for them. We tried to fix it once. We tried to fix it twice. We finally fixed it. And I want to thank Senator Cantwell, because she worked with us. And, and the uh, staff um, uh, of the committee really worked with us to try to get final equity. These veterans are dying. Well, now, with, the, with, the, with I believe, under, under the, the direction of, of this nominee and others within the department, they have effectively said, you're going to have to wait longer. That what, what we passed into law to provide for that equity, we're going to have to wait longer because these, these withdrawals, we're going to continue in place indefinitely. So I can't, I, I can't in good faith uh, support this nominee for that reason that is very, very directly related to my state, but I think it goes more broadly to how this nominee views multiple use of our federal lands. And with that, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank